beast, isn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I just kind of feel I'm not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm out on the beach, beavering away. <laughs> all my rods are rigged. I've got two rods baited, weighted, chucked out. Fishing five foot pulleys with single sand eel, topped and tail, just tails off about finger length, finger size sand eel, um, 3 0 hook uh, with a 2 0 panel just to keep it nice and straight. Uh, six ounce weights. So I'm fishing the six and baits. It's my standard setup, the Pevin, Pen Fathom 2 casting specials. And I'm here today fishing with my buddy uh, Nick Mann, who you may have seen on one of the previous boat videos who come out and uh, fish for some smooth hounds. Quite a good film, I enjoyed that one, it was a good session. Um, so that's what we're doing. What are we fishing for? Hoping for a small light today. I'm squinting because I should have bought sunglasses or a hat. It's absolutely screaming hot today. Um, you just can't odds the weather at the moment, it's so changeable. Um, yeah, so we're fishing for small light or anything else. Anything would be welcome. I feel there may be a bit of an effort to save the blank today. And yeah, we're at Hordle. Hordle, south coast, fishing for rays, flood and tide. We've got, look at the time, about three hours till high water. So I'm gonna to fish to high, the slack, and the turn of tide from high. Possibly not the best choice of the, of the, of the possible, um, or what is possible. Um, I tend to fish through low but work today, and this is an after work session. God, the sun is screaming on my face there. That is really hot. So anyway, I'll get a chance to show you the rigs. We'll do a bait up. We'll show you my noddy casting. We'll show you the beach, and hopefully we'll show you a fish or two. Um, I'm watching my rod tips. <laughs> so that's what we're up to. This is where I am. Hopefully we're gonna catch a few. See you in a bit. So I thought we'd take this opportunity to have a look at the, the rig, which is a standard five foot pulley. Um, the, weight, the weighted end is a Gemini Solo splashdown with the integral bait clip. I bought the mould for these and you buy the plastics as kits, come in packs of 10, I think they are, or you can get industrial size packs. Um, but that's the weight in itself and obviously the grip lead will just break free with the arms. You can adjust the tension on the arm. If you squeeze those together you can increase the tension. Alternatively you can slightly loosen them off if you want a, a, a less, lesser grip. Um, most of this tackle is Gemini tackle because that's what I'm using at the moment. These are the super strength Gemini clips and we attach it to there. I'm using six ounce weights so I'm using 70 pound body and the rule of thumb pretty much is 10 pound per ounce of weight so 10 pound line strength per ounce of weight plus a safety factor of 10 pound. So six times 10 pound, 60 pound, plus a safety factor, 70 pound. My rig body is 70 pound. That is five foot long. I'm using a Gemini pulley bead that's got the swivel built into it. And one side of the stopper is a bead and the hook snood side is two. Now I fished that with tubing before now, three beads, I'm going for distance here, so I've dropped one bead. It may not sound much, I think every little helps. Two beads to help kick the snood away from the pulley. And then a tiny little 140 pound stainless steel Gemini swivel. Absolutely amazing little swivels they are. And my panel hook is just hooked up out of the way for now. And my hook snood, which is probably just where it is, just short of five foot. On the end of that, I've got a Varavas size 3.0 BMX, big mouth extra. And the panel hook is a 2.0 Varavas hook, but it's got a slight kink to it. So it is a pulley hook. It does actually dress the line differently. Rather than just a straight eye, it's got that little kink to it. So it is a designated pulley hook. So that's the rig. 
The bait I'm going to do for this next one is a double sand deal and squid. An absolute stunning standard bait. Catch all sorts on it, but it is pretty much a standard small eye bait. If you said to me, what are you going to fish for, small eye, what are you going to use as bait, it would be this. So we take two sand eel. You can top and tail them, you can whatever your fancy takes. I'm just going to lay them evenly alongside each other. A very fine latex bait elastic, environmentally friendly latex bait elastic. This is Tronics Pro. I'm sure there are other brands available. This is the one that I've got. I'm just going to lash them together, not bothering too close with the head end. Back to the middle. I'm not squeezing too hard. I'm not trying to cut these sand eel in half. I'm just trying to make sure they stay together. Down to the tail. Stopping short of the end of the tail because I don't want those tail bits. And then back to the middle again. Trying to concentrate on keeping it nice and straight. I don't want it looking like a banana. And then two wraps around the finger. Pass it through. I take one wrap before pulling it. By taking one wrap and pulling it, that extra disappears anyway but it doesn't slice everything up. You're not pulling it tight so it cuts, cuts the bait in half. The two heads, chop them at the gill rakers, the two tails, just get rid of them. And you end up with a bait at the moment that looks like that. About, funnily enough, one of my sausage finger sizes. So that's what we've got. Two lovely sand eels together. Let's look from a hook snood. The 3 BMX, I lay down the back and I'm aiming for the hook not to sit further than the bottom of the bait. I want it to fall just short, possibly about that much. Just stops it from getting snagged and lay the line across it. Now I want elastic that in. You're going, oh, you're losing loads of elastic, Mark. This is super fine elastic. It's very fine elastic. Concentrating on the hook end, or the eye of the hook. Just lash that hook in. Work my way to the top, lay the line in, and trap it. Want that line, to, don't want this bit, this piece of line at the end, to come free when it's out there in the water, because it won't look natural. It will look wrong. If it looks wrong, it is wrong. Back to the middle. A quick scoochie around the fingers. Make sure you don't mask it the hook at any point. A wrap and snap. Just clean my hands a little bit. It's going everywhere. And now I need a little piece of squid. So any squid of your fancy. I'm just gonna take a strip. Off the squid. So you can see one squid goes a long way. Um, we end up with a strip and the fat end, just looking where the hook's sitting, the fat end goes at the hook end and then we lay it over the top of the hook. See how proud that hook still is? It's still super proud and the thin end tapers up to the thin end. So that's what we got. We're going to have to elastic that in. That ain't going to stay there on its own. And this is the one now where we're not trying to mummify it, but this is what's going to make everything streamlined. So we just take some wraps, make sure it sits nice and square, true to the rest of the bait. Just trap in the little corners and the ends. Take your time, be careful with it. Maybe just trap the hook in a little bit. So maybe a couple of wraps around the actual hook itself, making sure you do not mask the point. This is so fine, you could quite easily do that without realizing. And we're gonna work our way up to the end now. We've got to give somewhere for the panel to bite into, something that will retain the panel. I'm not trying to make this sound patronizing, but I've been asked to show this because I've been told in the past I do it all too quick and no one can see what I'm doing. 
some people are, are looking to learn you know some people are just looking to see what you catch try and help everyone out right so we get to the point where I want to get as close to the tip as possible Ooh. he says dropping it slippery fingers he's a slippery shocker I just want to get some elastic around that end for that panel to have something to hook into and then the two turns around the finger pass it through the center a wrap and a snap okay we're getting somewhere now we're almost there just trim anything that doesn't look quite right don't want any flappy bits and that is where we're at now and that is a stunning bait look at that double sand eel and squid but we still got the panel to do and I think this is quite important that we get this bit right as well I'm going to try and show it on the camera that at the moment naturally sits true when we put the panel in we take three wraps one two three we want the hook point to come out in the opposite direction of the hook point that's already there and we want it down the centre of the bait the centre of the bait and then pull it tight and by going centre of the bait it sits true if you put it on the side, if you put it out in angles, if you go through the fat end, I don't know whatever you do, you want that straight line edge and if you look at that, we've got a hook here stunning a hook here stunning it's not going to snag on anything and it's got all of that attraction it's about a finger size bait that is what's going out next I don't know what wouldn't like that I'd like that <laughs> right all cleaned up so what do we do Preservation of your bait, so it's hot and sunny at the moment, so it's going back in with the cool stuff. I've got my weight and my bait. We clip them in together. That's now captive. That is now the rig. That's what's going to get cast out. Just gather that up. That goes with the rest of my bait where it's going to stay cool and out of the sun. It's not going to dry out. It's nice and juicy and it's going to stay cold ready for casting out in a bit just just conscious of looking after it all that effort covering it with a tail I've got my scissors on top so I've basically got a bucket not a cool box today very cold frozen bait I didn't defrost it I'm picking out at the edges and it's defrosting in the water bait preservation uh, presentation and preservation today is key it is it is key keeping it super fresh, especially sand eel. Sand eel spoils so easy. So that's what we got. Five foot pulley, double sand eel and squid, hunting for rays, blanking at the moment. And I've got a bet on with Nick. First person to catch a ray has to do a naked lap of the shingle. So I'm holding back. <laughs> that's my excuse. No, it's all good. So there we are. Baited, weighted, ready to go. Fishing hard, catching nothing. Hopefully we'll bring you back in a bit with something exciting. Pretty sure I'm having some interest on this, but it's not anything definitive. It's not like a positive pull down or anything. And I'm probably picking up into this too soon. But, <laughs> I've had no bites for so long, maybe this is something. I sound surprised because it's been so quiet. We were just talking about it now. Um, we've literally had nothing. No bites, no interest, no nothing. But I've got a funny feeling. I've got a bit of weight on here actually. Gonna have to go down.
Don't want to lose it in the surf. It's a ray. It's a ray. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Oh. It was a long time coming. <laughs> look at that little stunner. Let's get it unhooked and have a good look at it. But that is target achieved. And what is absolutely stunning. I know the camera isn't gonna do this justice. She, I'm guessing, yeah, she's a she. Just retracted her eyes. So they can fully retract their eyes, look. They're back into the sockets. And they're called small eyes for a reason. <laughs> they've got small eyes. <laughs> what an absolutely stunning. Try and give you a really good look, because small eyes, they are. A little flutter flutter. Look at that. Try and lay the wings out. Look at it, and the transparentness of all that sensory organ up there. That is a, they're stunning creatures, aren't they? It's only small, I'm not gonna weigh it. I'm gonna get her back. Um, rig's working, bait's working. See if we can get another one, eh? What a cracker, chuffed the bits. This is top of the tide, top of the tide slack. And it was quite a, quite a decent little bite. No pull down to it, just a flutter flutter. Right, let's jibber jabber I'm gonna get this one back. I've lowered my rod tips, I don't know if you can see, rather than in the stands and up high. The tide has reached high water, just turned slack, and it's now running the other way. So as the tide's running out, I've lowered my rod tips just to lower, because I'm fishing pulley rigs, just to lower the bait set. Um, just to see if that makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, it's still slow, but we're fishing daytime and the flood. This is the flood tide. So there is a few more anglers just turned up now. Pretty much gonna fish the stereotypical way this venue should be fished, which is into darkness and fish the, the ebb, the, the falling tide through low, that slack of low in that initial turn. And that's at midnight tonight. So it's almost like a perfect tide for that. But not for me today, because I've got an early start tomorrow. So it was always a big ask to get a small eye, daytime, flood and tide. Managed to winkle one out. There's definitely times when you really should just keep quiet. So I just said to Nick, I'm gonna give this one some bilio, and it's either gonna go supersonic, or I'm gonna fluff it. I fluffed it. <laughs> Absolutely fluffed it. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so I was gonna fish the last bait out. As you can see, the sun's starting to set now. The lighting's changed. I haven't got any lighting with me. I've got no head torch tonight. I've got, a, um, I've got an early morning tomorrow. So I'm thinking it is actually just coming to the witching hour and it's probably gonna fish the best it's gonna in the next couple of hours. Fishing through to low, the low and the initial flood is always a favourite time for fishing for hounds for me. Um, hounds? Well, I've got hounds on the break, that's because we were just talking about it. Rays. So, I think actually, we're just, I'm just about to go at the time when this actually might come alive. But we've managed to winkle one out. And if I'm not concentrating properly, I'm unpicking my bird's nest. happens to the best of us um, and it wouldn't have been so bad if I hadn't have said it but I did say it as well so yeah so one small small eye albeit with the rig that I'd made for it baited the way I thought it would fish um, probably the wrong part of the tide but save the blank save the blank with the target species just wish I could have pulled another one out just to prove it wasn't a fluke um, so thank you for joining me I hope it's been of some use if that beating up and showing your rig earlier gives you the chance to try it yourself come and give it a go please I look forward to your comments try and keep them respectful um, but yeah I look forward to your comments I love reading them love answering them um, what would you do differently 
Do you fish the same venue, the same rig, the same bait? Do you do something differently? I'd love to hear it and uh, it will help everyone else out. So all that's really left now is for me to say goodbye. So take care, tight lines, happy fishing. I hope to see you sometime soon. From me, from here, with my bird's nest. <laughs> with my bird's nest, it's goodbye. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Oh, I'm back again. Bird's nest sorted. <laughs> See you later.